Hey, welcome back. I'm Corey. And I'm Sherry. And it's about dram time. <laughs> We're kicking off the six classic malt tasting today. Mm-hmm. With Glen Kinchy 12 year. First in the lineup. Mm-hmm. Kaboom. <laughs> Glen Kinchy is just outside of Edinburgh, the capital. Because of that, they call it the Edinburgh Malt. And in the past, they called it the Ladies Malt. Uh huh. Because it was so light and delicate. <laughs> I did not know. Yeah. Weird, but. <laughs> right. I looked, they don't have that listed anywhere anymore. They've, they've gotten rid of the Ladies Malt. Yeah. Uh, verbiage. They opened in 1825. And then in 1853, they went bankrupt, sold it, and it turned into a sawmill. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Yeah. So, uh, Matt and Lindsay, you could uh, turn your farm into a distillery someday. There you go. Go from sawmill to distillery. That would be great. <laughs> Revived in 1880, where it's been going until now. Originally, it was called the Milton Distillery. Weird name. Where did that come from? Don't know. Sure. But the they renamed 12 years later to Glen Kinchy. Glen, as we know, Valley and Kinchy. Um, the original owners were De Quincy. So they kind of garbled the last name of the original owners. Brought it together. De Quincy to Kinchy. So let's pop her open. Yeah. I love these times of, I don't know, shooting these videos because I only knew like a couple of those points. Um, he loves to just nerd out about, about all this stuff. So half of this is really because- Oh, don't use my good pen on that. I know, but it's not opening up. Oh. Half, half of this is so I can learn some of the history without having to read. <laughs> this is her TLDR. <laughs> Oh, do tell me more. Go <laughs> <What>? on. <laughs> oh, yes, I knew that already. So Glen Kinchy only actually uses 8% of what they distill for their single malt. Yeah. The rest goes into their blends. Ooh, it's a squeaky cork. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that would smell so good. Okay, sorry, go on. <laughs> Like the rest of the classics, uh, it's owned by Diageo, that also owns Johnny Walker. Ooh. I'm always nervous pouring on, Hefty on pour. camera. Oh, whoops. Okay, you know, it's the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> a good start, cheers. <laughs> it's a, it's a, gonna be a good Whiskey Wednesday for us. <laughs> we, uh, our cabinet was running a, running a little low, so we're excited to to shoot so that we could get a new one in the in the cabinet. I know, I always beg them to open another one. <laughs> we have to have a good reason. And I was like, no, we can't open it until we uh, until we get the cameras rolling. And then we can pop a couple new ones open for us. Kind of spilled. Just make sure. That works. That works. Okay. We're set. Mm -hmm. Cheers to us. All right. That's interesting, like, that's weird to describe it this way, but like a sweet mustiness. Mm -hmm. I'm always mm. fascinated by the mm. different terms that people use in describing scotch because I hear things that just like you wouldn't put on like um, something that you would taste that, that and enjoy, like, but like when you hear people talk about like tobacco or tar or like band-aid and I'm like, why would you want to drink that? But it's so odd. <laughs> or like, hey, I'm like, yum. But it like, you get little hints of those things, but it doesn't mean like that's like the heavy taste in it. Right. But it's just interesting to pick out the different smells and things that that you just think about the world around you and the different like earthy notes, um, whether it's floral notes, 
um, more sweet notes and what are you picking out? Um, think about different spices and then try to pull out those flavors. Yeah, just I mean, helps you. 80% of what you smell is just yeah. the general whiskey smell. It's yeah. The other 10 to 20% are what the notes that you'd be going. Cause otherwise you'd yeah. just be saying all the five, six regular things that always come across. Right. So more to come on Ooh. specifics of tasting Ooh. and how to kind of get more out of that tasting. Yeah. But... So like and subscribe. <laughs> Join us for more Scotch videos. You plugged. There we go. About <laughs> tram time. About tram time. Okay. Oh man. Okay, what ABV is this one? <laughs> I always like to taste it before I know the ABV because sometimes it'll be like a really high ABV and it'll surprise me because it'll taste really smooth. So 43% is what we're at for this one. 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I don't really taste like a particular spice note, but it's that like some of them have more of that feeling of warmth and I get that like as you're, as you move it around in your mouth and and taste and smell and it's not I mean of course like that happens just with the alcohol in general but some no matter the ABV or it's just it gives that more like feeling of warmth I like that it's not overly sweet right it's I mean they, they say it's light and delicate whiskey mm -hmm. for a reason I feel like it it is it's pretty similar to Craig and Moore I have not had this one in a while, so I mm -hmm. kind of forgot what it tasted like. It's kind of fun coming back. And if you do save your tasting notes from when you originally tasted it and your palate was different, then to compare it to now, it's kind of fun. Wish I would have done that with this one. We've got a pretty extensive spreadsheet. I'm pretty yeah. sure the first time I tasted this one, it was like, mmm, <laughs> scotch. So this, this it is doesn't we, burn. Right, we kicked off the whole <laughs> that whole tasting set with this one. Right, so. right. Good. With the ladies' malt, I tried the. Mm. <laughs> oh man. Okay, smell it again. Uh -huh. I get I get hay in this one too. It's I think that's definitely... where that mustiness that. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Some fresh picked wildflowers outside of a barn on a Tuesday. Oh my gosh, those, <laughs> I never get it when people can make those comments, like, well, you're walking east and <laughs> the wind is in your hair. No. Like, where's the skip to recipe? <laughs> <laughs> Jump to recipe. Just That's tell what me, what are you tasting? <laughs> <laughs> it all started when I was five years old. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what flavors, it's, t it's always interesting, like, Checking first what I think I'm getting from it, and then uh, reading the notes. I love I love the box notes. Seeing yeah. what it says, uh, those should be the box notes. Yeah, that's straight from the from malts. I can't, I can't read your handwriting. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I know that says vanilla. I'm working. But that looks like it says cat flowers, and I don't know what that means. That says cut flowers. <laughs> okay. That's a little better. I'm, I'm taking a how to improve my handwriting <laughs> YouTube right now. So we'll see maybe, maybe a behind the scenes shot. We'll, uh, we'll throw in what my writing looks That's like. Okay. That's okay. It's funny with this one. I don't, I don't get the vanilla mm -hmm. in it. And that's what I think. So the, the musty hay, there was this note that I couldn't pinpoint, um, that wasn't quite a spice, but they say like the finish is like herbal, kind of drying, a little pulpery. And I think that's what I'm getting. A little bit of that. Where it's like that hint of floral, but I like that it's not an overpowering floral. We've we've been to massage places where they give us weird flower water. Oh, like rose water or yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah. Some of that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. comes through on the finish. Mm -hmm. well, the, the, the flowery is right on point because mm -hmm. I, I am getting a lot of the the fresh florally yeah. cat flowers, cut cat, flowers. Cat flowers. Cat flowers. <laughs> mm. It's like cattails, it's in the same family, you know. Mm -hmm. 
No, this is this is another good one. I like it. That, you know, I don't know, from as many flavors as we're finding, it's not like super complex. Right. Um, it's not like overly hit you with um, flavors, but it is a good beginning, kind of beginning one to start with. Yeah, and it, it gives a real clear picture of mm -hmm. uh, malt whiskey. Right. Or the bourbon whiskey, corn whiskey is such a different ball game. Mm -hmm. in, in the sweetness layers yeah. yeah but it's a good dram it is i don't think i'd buy it for the price that it's at again yeah what does this usually run like around us 60s yeah and it's weird it's it's one of just the few lowland distilleries that are that have been active for a long time uh them and alkintosh and Mm -hmm. uh, recently, several more have popped up, so I'm excited to see what yeah. the new offerings from, from the Lowlands are going to be. Uh, Glen Kinchy, oddly, only double distills, where Lowlands were always known for their triple distilling. Mm -hmm. So they kind of kicked that trend. Yeah. But hey, yeah. it's a good scotch. It's a good dram. Um, so yeah, not one. I don't, I don't think I would keep in my cupboard worth tasting. So if anybody's doing a six classic malts tasting, um, definitely an enjoyable dram. Yeah. Worth, worth trying, worth saying you've tried. Um, but it's not one I'd, I'd search out for. Yeah. I wouldn't scream, they have Glen Kinchy here. Right. Right. But I, I have nothing bad to say about it. Right. So we got that. <laughs> what a review. <laughs> Not terrible. <laughs> Not terrible. You, you can quote me, Diageo. No, it's it's a good dram. I like the warmth that I get from it. Not overly sweet. You can pick out a few different flavors that I was a little surprised by, and I like the lightness of it. So yeah, that's Glen Kinchy for you, Glen Kinchy Twelve. So thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Slanja. Slanja. <laughs>